Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tie-Dye Mindset. This is Greg Foster, your intrepid dye artist investigator. Once again, with uh, another uh, feather in my cap, another jewel in my crown interview here with Kurt Wallace. Um, I found this guy, um, you know, just kind of uh, fiddling through YouTube and, and the tie-dye uh, Facebook group. And what really caught my eye was his Phoenix design. Um, and I, I, you know, if you're a fan, fan of Harry Potter or if you're just into that kind of mythology, the Phoenix has got some really great uh, deep meanings. That's why I, I really grabbed onto this design. Uh, and as I got to know more and more of Kurt's art, I really uh, was pretty amazed at uh, what he was able to do with uh, some powdered dye and some cotton t-shirts. And uh, so again, I bring people that inspire me and that I look up to in the tie-dye world on these interviews. And I do feel really honored and special to have uh, Kurt willing to come and share with us for a little bit uh, about his journey through the tie-dye world. Um, and we're going to get you his Instagram, which is Surreal Pencil. We'll get that all posted up for you guys to follow his work. Um, so, Kurt, thank you so much again uh, for taking the time today. Um, it really, I'm really looking forward to this one. I know we've been trying to do it for a little bit, and I'm glad the stars aligned for us today. So, welcome. Thanks, man. Uh, I, I'm honored myself. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, I know there's a lot of fans out there and a lot of chatter in, in the tie-dye world about what you've been doing and how you've been doing it, you know, with hot, hot water irrigation technique, kind of uh, all the rage right now. Um, I know a lot of people kind of look to you as an expert in that area. Uh, and certainly that one tool, the peristaltic pump that you use, uh, is is kind of unusual because it's not available uh, easily to everybody who you know is trying to do this on a budget or uh, not trying to clutter up their entire space with uh, specialized tools. So I really appreciate uh, your use of that tool. How did you? I mean, how did you come to that? How did you get that piece? Well, it, it's kind of crazy. Um, Started off dying in March of 2017. Started with liquid, uh, your Walmart brand, you know, Tulip. Um, and I wanted to try some ice dye. I went on YouTube and checked out some videos. Want to try out some ice dye. So I was doing some ice dyeing again with Tulip Guy. Not the greatest. I didn't know all this tie dye world existed, honestly, to be truthful. Um, but uh, I tried some ice dye, but I'm impatient in a lot of areas, traffic and uh, waiting for ice to melt or two of them. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, what if I heated up water and just sprayed it on? So I used just a Windex bottle and some soda ash and hot water and helped it along. And I liked what I did. Now, I didn't realize at the time that you can immediately wash out. Um, but, uh, I had done some research. I was looking for some, cause at the time I was putting soda ash in my hot water. Um, I don't do that anymore. I got to the point of just mixing it with my, uh, powdered dye and that seemed to work. But, um, I was looking for a pump, uh, believe it or not, that, um, could take a caustic solution through it that wouldn't damage all the seals and everything else. And you have to keep repurchasing a new pump every few weeks. So, um, one morning, uh, I typically do my best work, uh, on the weekends late at night. Mm -hmm. um, Don't we all? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, after, uh, I'd finished rinsing out some dyes, I got this idea. I looked online, different styles of pumps and stuff. And uh, I came across peristaltic pumps and I said, well, it sounds like the best application. Uh, so I put a note out on my Facebook. Uh, hey, if anybody just happens to have a peristaltic pump sitting around, I'd like to borrow it for a while. Craziest thing within literally 10 minutes, an old supervisor of mine that I had worked with, uh, had purchased some in an auction and they were sitting around in his basement. 
he said he was at the uh, farmer's market, but as soon as he got done with that, he'd call me and let me know and we'd come check it out. So I went over there and he had one, had the tubing and everything, came home and set it up. And that was that. That's pretty cool. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes it's really inspiration that grabs us into new techniques and new tools. And I, I just thought it was, you know, I, I got a biology background, so I wasn't unfamiliar with the tool, uh, when I first saw it, but I was just like, wow, what a unique application of, of <laughs> medical tools. So uh, I applaud you in that, in that investigation. Um, so take me back a little bit, take us back a little bit into, you know, uh, you said it was what, two, 2016, where you really started getting into it. What was it about tie-dye that, that kind of got you started and, and, and wanting to, you know, play around with this, with this art form? Well, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. Uh, all of my life, I disliked tie-dye a lot. I mean, I actually despised and hated it. <laughs> I at one time back in the eighties and nineties, I was a long hair. Okay. Just, just never got into the pastel swirls and, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, all that I didn't know Paul Kenny existed. I didn't know Tim, Putney uh, exists. I mean, there were all these artists that I know now that I'm like, they've been doing this stuff forever. And I didn't know, I didn't know tie dye could look like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was a pencil artist for 37 years. And in uh, November of 2012, I lost it all in a fire. Oh. Uh, 30 down the drain. I mean, it literally took everything. Oh. Uh, struggled for a while. Um, I didn't know what depression was, but I learned what depression was. Um, and I got involved uh, through my church with some uh, art communities um, here in town, here in Columbia. And we've got a pretty vibrant art community, University of Missouri and all that mm -hmm. music, artists, all kinds. Um, but uh, I was trying to get back on that horse again, because man, I mean, I literally lost everything and some drawings i'd spend two to five hundred hours on um i didn't just put together sketches i mean they were full pretty cool i'll have to, oh, I'll have to send you a print you give me some hot sauce and i'll send you a print oh consider uh, it done right on <laughs> uh, but uh i did that for five years even tried some different picked up painting and i never was into color i like my uh, pencil my graphite mm -hmm. uh Ne just never got into color, but I tried some different uh, art uh, mediums and just wasn't just really couldn't get into it. And finally, um, one day, uh, it was in March of 2017 uh, at church one day, I during Lent, I left my art career at the altar. Uh, that was hard. Um, but I decided I, I, I couldn't pursue this anymore. It just took, took too much wind out of me. And um, two weeks later, my, I'd come home and my son and one of his buddies had bought a tulip tie-dye kit and made a mess <laughs> more than anything. So I, mess of, you know, I've never liked tie-dye, but uh, if we could do so, try doing something a little different. So it would basically put my signature on it. And I had no idea it was gonna turn into what it was. I mean, I just did it just for one shirt, just for fun. Uh, and funny enough, the very first shirt I did, I had a friend that always liked, and a lot of my drawings had flying eyeballs in them. And I thought I would try to tie dye a flying eyeball. Mm. Uh, and it didn't turn out like flying eyeball. It actually did have an eyeball that was in the center of it that was pretty cool, but the wings did not look anything like the phoenix. I mean, sure. it, was, it was my first attempt. Uh, but I actually wore that to work uh, one day, and a good friend of mine who her favorite color is tie-dye. She's from Wisconsin, so I'll use her dialect. Like, oh, where'd you get that? And I said, I'm <laughs> so 
uh, she said, make, make me one. So I made her one and she had a girlfriend at the time and girlfriend wanted one literally before the end of April of 2017. I think I'd made 50 shirts and they would all show up at work on a Friday that mm. used to be cash Friday. It quickly became tie dye Friday and that's awesome. what everybody calls Friday now. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Wow. That, that, that really is quite remarkable it sounds like you you really embraced that phoenix of coming out of the ashes losing everything and you know letting go of of hang-ups and prejudices dare i say and allowing uh uh you know allowing god to really come in and point you in the right direction uh i know i found that that when I give it up and, and let go of control, some amazing things happen in my life. And that, that's a great story. Um, it truly, you know, that means so much to me in knowing what the Phoenix is in your life. Uh, and hopefully, you know, people understand how amazingly transformative that, that story. Wow. Um, I honestly, I'm a little flabbergasted right now. The, the real, Funny thing, Greg, I never planned for the Phoenix either. It just, I had tried another attempt later on. <laughs> my Bible things, and I said, you know what? That's that's actually pretty cool. So I said, what else could I do with this? And the first Phoenix was born. And now, I mean, I, I can't explain fate or... Um, karma or I, I I have no explanation but I know there's something else going on in the universe I have faith I know where it comes from for me but for the people that don't understand that or follow that that's perfectly fine I'm not going to judge them on it but something is at work in the universe that's above us all and I believe that a hundred percent well you know sometimes uh as as tools of that higher power let's call it or that divinity uh you know we are given gifts to share with the world and i'll be honest we are truly blessed to see the gifts that you've been given to to share with us so i thank you and i'm sure there are a lot of people out there that would say the same thing if they had the chance that being I, said I mean um i know there are a lot of times in our lives that we aren't able to really excel uh, or get to the next level without some help. And, you know, in our chats and our brief conversations, um, you've mentioned some amazing artists in your life. How, how did you come across those artists? And how were you able to um, get them to open up and, and share with you tips, techniques, uh, tricks of the trade, however you want to call it? Um, well, let's see. Uh, the very first... At the time, I had really crappy internet. I was paying for a service and it wasn't, I wasn't getting return. So there were some months that I could only get four hours worth of internet time on. Uh, but the first thing I'd done was gone to YouTube. I mean, it was fun doing my own thing, but I wanted to see what else was out there. Uh, Crispy was one of the first people. I'm not sure if you know about uh, Crispy, um, but um he was one of the first people that I really, I loved his manner, uh, the stuff that he was doing, the shirts. I was paying more attention to the shirts he was wearing when he was dying than actually paying attention to the dying process. So I'd have to watch the video two or three times. Um, <clears throat> but then I got a new phone and uh, through AT&T and I'm not advertising for them and I hope they don't cut that out, but um I guess you can do that, can't you? Um, but I had actually gotten a decent Wi-Fi out here. And then I started finding these groups uh, on Facebook. Uh, I was like, holy cow. Yeah. I, I, I thought I was okay. I mean, <laughs> the stuff now and it's like, Wow. I even made a post here a while back and put it in the main tie dye group because some of the pictures I, I do really have to laugh, but we have to start somewhere, right? We've got to 
beginning to everything. We can't uh, learn to drive without practice. We can't learn cursive if that's even taught anymore. We can't learn that without practice. Um, drawing, you know. So uh, I was quickly consumed uh, with some of the artists that I was seeing. Paul Kenny was one of them. Uh, Landon Bennett um, had just kind of started shortly before me. So he wasn't what he is today, but he still had designs that really stuck out at me. So mm -hmm. I reached out and uh, he's a heck of a guy. He's um, one of my best tie dyer friends. I was out at his place in uh, Illinois a couple of weeks back and learned some stuff from him. But the, I believe the first time I went to Lane and I was looking for better saturation because I had too much white space and I wanted to get more depth of color and pop. And um, Lane gave me some clues on that, um, things to try to achieve. Of course, I was doing HWI, so it was different. Um, but the, the basic premise is the same, right? Uh, so once I started getting that, um, I mean, I was, I was head over heels in it now. I mean, I'm not, I'm not backing out now. I started buying the good dyes and uh, started really following some of the big guys. And I was just literally amazed. And I felt so small. I mean, I really felt so small because here's these guys that have, I mean, the Kenny style, it's something people try to replicate. Um, but I was just enthralled and I'm like, well, what can I do? How can I set myself apart? And I've always been that way. And it's not that I'm in competition with anybody else. I'm really in competition with myself. Um, what else could I do? So like the moon over the water, firework over the water, um, my Phoenix design, which that's how people know me. Um, it, it was something different. And I, I thought real hard about keeping all that stuff, HWI, Phoenix, everything else secret, but Greg, I can't take it with me. And more than anything, I want to see somebody else, some kid, some young punk kid come up and within, you know, two months of learning how to tie dye, he's blowing me away, you know, but as an artist, I can appreciate an artist that takes it and puts their own spin. I don't care if you're a musician or a painter or whatever, you can put your own spin on it and make it yours. Dude, more power to you. And I'll give you all the praise. I'm good for you. So I couldn't take it. With me, so I thought, you know what, this, this is a talent I can't take to my grave. So I'll share what I can. And I'm glad I did. I really am glad I did. That, that, that's awesome. I love hearing that, that you're willing to allow people to come and explore your designs and, and turn it into their own, uh, their own blossom, as it were. Uh, I think a true artist, <clears throat> at least the selfless artist, is excited uh, to see that kind of, um, that their inspiration, their product in the world is inspiring others to uh, come and not only try out the technique, but also make it better, improve it, tweak it, whatever you want to call it. Um, Justin. Yeah. You know, I think Justin is a great example of grabbing it by, you know, by the wheel and driving it, you know, at a million miles an hour and really making it his own. And I, I've already uh, uh, interviewed Justin. I got to get that up, but uh, a great guy, a great artist. And like you say, you know, he's he's definitely uh, added his own spin to it. So I love seeing his work too. Um, yep. You know, so just to shift a little bit, um, you know, we do live uh, in a community of dye artists out there and I tend to see um, kind of two camps, you know, you, you get some that are very uh, open to share and very willing um, to give the knowledge that they have and to make it available to others to try. And I, and I also know that there are those artists um, and there certainly do, uh, there's certainly, you know, no loss of respect for them wanting to keep their techniques close to the chest um, for whatever multitude of reasons that's up to them. Um, and I'm not gonna be the one that's gonna try and pry it out of their hands. 
Um, I mean, we obviously see uh, where you sit uh, with through your videos and your t tutorials and, and what you just said. Um, do you feel that that uh, getting more people to try um, your techniques or getting more people these lessons uh, allows the art form to kind of devalue itself or, or, or water it down? Um, how do you kind of interpret what what sharing all that knowledge does for the for the community at large? I guess first and foremost, I'd have to say, Greg, I kind of look at life in general as we are here to help others and inspire others, however that is. And we don't have to always physically help someone as as much as even listen or give them advice or even steer them in a direction that they discover on their own. You know, I, I can show you how to make a phoenix, but you're going to have to discover a lot of things on your own unless I'm just standing right over your shoulder. Um, so, you know what, to each their own, there's uh, another artist, uh, Kristen Ryan, who does some really spiral. I don't even know if they have a word, but Kristen does them the best. And, um, you know, she keeps that stuff a secret. You can find that information on how to make those. I think uh, uh, Carl um, has some, Mr. Tie-Dye. Uh, but Kristen's just taken it to her own uh, fresh level and she wants to keep that to herself and good for her. You know, that's that's some of her side gig and more more power to her. Um, if if somebody wants to share it, like Justin Biffer, you know, I see the wig wag or the ripple. I see everybody doing that now. And a lot of that's through Justin. But those artists... At some point, I hope they don't just copy somebody else's work. I hope they go out and find their own space. Whether or not they do, that's on them. It's I don't find it affecting me. If I teach someone how to do my Phoenix, I've not seen any drawback on sales on my end. Mm -hmm. And there's always be the people that search out the original, you know, the Paul Kenny or even Josh Cohen who's taken Paul Kenny style to his own level. But yeah, I, I have Josh, I'd love to have one of Paul's too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we're here on this earth to help somebody behind us or somebody walking beside us or catch up to the guy in front of us. And it's not necessarily about competition, it's making it through life, man. Um, so you can look at sharing or not sharing however you like, but what I've seen in this community, and I've been in the art community for a long time, but I can say this is the most supportive, the most kind, the most loving. I, I mean, these are my people. These are our people, Greg. And Definitely. I'm I'm really glad to be a part of it because we are in our own way changing the world with color and you know people say it's tie dye is really big these days. Well, it's part of it's because everybody's at home buying my dye, so it's sold out at Pro Chem. Yeah. Do <laughs> um, you know, you know I need what? that cerulean? <laughs> right, right. Do you need five pounds of that? Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, I, I see it as we put smiles on a lot of people's faces. And I, I don't know this for a fact that I probably give away 20 to 25% of the stuff I own or the stuff I make. And I'm sure there's probably a, other artists that do the same, but it's coming across having a shirt, a couple extra shirts in my car and coming across somebody with a frown on their face at a Taco Bell drive through and say, hey man, what's your trick today? What's your vibe? Uh, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it, man. So here, take a shirt and toss it at me. They're like, what's this? And it's like, it's a happy shirt, man. Take it home, put it on, tell me what you think. And literally having somebody lean out of the drive through window, we're not supposed to hug, but people feel, man, people appreciate the love. And I think that's what this community stands for more than anything is we are making wearable art that changes people's attitudes, their lives, their direction, their sense of direction. I know what it's done for me.
and I hated tie dye all my life, and look at me now. That I couldn't have said it better. Uh, full, full circle. Yeah, man, you you definitely I think really capture what uh, at least how I feel about tie dye. Um, not only as an artist, but as a, a user, <laughs> as a user. <laughs> You know, to get those comments, to bring those smiles, to engage people out in the world just by a bizarre design. You know, I, I have a tank top that I did that I wear to the gym and, you know, talk about a, a place of, of brute ego mentality. Uh, go to a gym and wear tie dye and very quickly you'll find out, you know, from the looks and from the comments who uh, is is truly a brute and who's a little bit of a softy <laughs> and the women seem to love it too 80 percent, 80 percent of the women oh yeah which is great um so kind of in that same uh vein of discussion um i just wanted to touch briefly because a lot of people are in hard times right now and they're looking for side gigs they're looking for ways to create maybe a little extra income. And I've seen a lot of people posting on uh, some of the groups about starting their own, you know, Etsy page, or how do I get into selling this stuff? And aside from um, talking about uh, the, the quality of their craft, if you want to even put that as a category, what kind of things um, have kind of pointed you in that direction? Or, you know, even a more basic question is how much of your efforts are put into a professional level of, of, of financial gain or at least covering your costs or, you know, and what kind of tipped you in that direction and how would you give advice to somebody who wants to do that as well? You know, when I first started this in 2017 uh, at work, uh, I worked for 3M here in Columbia and there's about 500 people that work out there. So it started off just trying to pay for my tulip supplies. Um, but gradually as I got better and started purchasing more dyes, uh, better dyes, better quality dyes, uh, honed my own technique. Um, I don't know if it's luck or my designs were just so much different and it wasn't even the Phoenix or anything else. It was just, even my early stuff was just different than your typical world which I just absolutely wanted to stay away from um I mean I wish I could do a super swirl but uh, that looks like a lot of work too oh they uh, are <laughs> but uh you know it started off just a small thing trying to recoup my cost and then um uh, people started tipping me like I'd say a shirt for 10 bucks and they'd give me 20 and tell me to keep the change um and I found that you know honestly 20 to 25 dollars is a price most people are willing to pay for a shirt um and it doesn't have to be a spectacular uh design or anything else i think people are drawn to the color more than anything um it, you know design is a factor of course but people just want tie-dye uh right. so 20 25 dollar range is a good safe place um i don't sell my phoenix for that but for that uh, I sell them for 75 to 85 and I still typically have people tip me. I mean, there's some real true consumers out there that are also artists, usually glass artists I've found mm -hmm. or some of the tippers. Um, but, uh, and it's funny how tie dye and the glass got all tied in. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's perfect. Uh, but, you know, for somebody who's just wanting to start out, the, the market is saturated. It's in no pun intended, really, but the market is saturated. Um, I think you have to go out and find your people. Uh, and it's kind of hard right now because of the COVID. So almost everything we have to do on is online. And I'm, I hurt for those people that depended on all those festivals and the music venues and everything else because they've they've had to change up their gear uh but um for somebody new starting out i would the first thing and foremost and my people if you can call them that came to me 
because they wanted something different and that's all i offered mm -hmm. uh but find your own space, uh, go out and look for it if you have to. Um, even there's some pizza places that I made some shirts for early on that uh, they already had somebody doing tie-dye for them, but they were really just basic, kind of muddy, ugly, not great. So I gave them some of mine and they're like, wow, that's different. So just, you gotta be different, you gotta offer something outside the norm if you really want to particularly set, set yourself apart and draw people to you you're going to find your clientele and there's there's an artist for every buyer out there i don't care what you make what you sell the price you charge for it um there's a market for everybody you just have to go out there and find it agreed agreed yeah it's it's Remarkable how many shirts I've done that I thought were pieces of garbage that somebody would text me and say, oh my God, that thing is so beautiful. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Just pay shipping. Here's my, here's my PayPal. My exactly. Cool. Um, so... I just want to ask, because I love diving in uh, a little bit into your noggin, is... Uh, is there anything that you're currently working on or you're currently playing around with that uh, we should be looking out for from you? Or are we are we kind of on the straight and narrow and you're busting out shirts as best you can? Well, um, let's see. Uh, I recently, I haven't done liquid dyeing in, oh my gosh, since mid 2017 once i discovered hwi i never looked back uh but um there's a prior method that um say you liquid dye and then you go back over it with a hot soda ash wash if that's what you want to call it mm -hmm. and it sets the dye then uh so the last two weeks and again i've gone out to uh visit landon uh bennett in Illinois, and um, I'm just gonna say I've got more shirts from that guy than I have of my own or anybody. He just posts stuff, and it's like, oh man, get love the colors. I really don't have money, but here you go. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, he uh, showed me some of his liquid techniques and finishing processes that really got me. I actually have a phoenix tied up right now that. Um, I'm actually going to uh, do my first liquid dye Phoenix sometime today. And well, I can't wait to see the results. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but I just did this last night. Like when the color's not great from the computer screen there, but there's a lot of deep purples in there. I've just been playing around with it to see, hey man, I, I see another, I see more possibilities in this now. So I think, you know, you got liquid, you've got ice, you've got HWI. I think you've got a toolbox of some really great processes that you can fit to meet, meet your need. I, I'm kind of going by, back to liquid. It's not to say I'm giving up HWI, but if I could speed up my process, because, uh, you know, a Phoenix takes four hours, if I could speed that up, uh get it down to two hours that means i could produce more and have more out there people wearing them so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going back to liquid trying experimenting and i think that's something about most tie-dye artists anyway serious artists is they're always trying something new they pick up a new technique or a uh, new process new style that's that's how we grow some people are fine in their lane they don't want to venture out if you're making sales or do exactly what you want to do in that lane fine stay in it but i get every day coming home from work i take a different route i for no other intention other than to see something different and i do um but that's kind of my life too uh, i don't want to get squirrel holed into one path i'm always looking for something new and that's kind of where I'm at with going back to liquid, trying something different that I haven't explored. I didn't have a chance to explore because I was so busy down the other rabbit hole that 
so yeah that's me i'd like to i'd really like to get into some tying some mandalas and stuff because that stuff just boggles my mind yeah uh but we'll see we'll see cool well yeah. that that's just amazing kurt i love hearing that uh you know you're you're exploring and testing and experimenting and like you said i think any artist worth their weight is always trying to push their own boundaries uh you know needless of taking one technique and pushing the boundaries of the technique uh but really challenging yourself and really finding what it is about uh a specific technique uh or art form uh that that you connect with and then resonating that to a point of shattering picking up the pieces and putting them back together in a way that's even more glorious. So I, I really can identify with where you're coming from. Now. Um, well, I just want to say again, Kurt, you, you got a lot of great stuff going on up in that noggin of yours. I think your mindset is really in line with a lot of our community. Uh, a lot of what I've heard from uh, a lot of other artists and, and certainly what's going on up here in my place too. Uh, I really, really identify with a lot of what you get, what you got to say. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for taking some time today. Um, it's really, really been an honor. I'm going to send you some sauce. And what we're going to do is maybe uh, I, I, I did it with Thomas. I don't know if you saw the video. Thomas Kenny got some of my sauces and we did kind of like a hot one style where he tried the sauces and then we tried to talk a little bit more about tie dye. Um, he didn't last through the last few flavors, but I think that'd be a lot of fun to do with you as well, since you're a fan I, of spicy. Hey, I used to grow, I used to have a garden out here that was full of 720 hot peppers at the time they were the hottest. Awesome. And there for a long time, I thought, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot for the world record. But then the Carolina Reaper came out and not to get too detailed, the exit wounds were too painful to continue on. So yeah, I, there. I hold the world yep. record, uh, the Guinness World Record for eating the most Carolina Reaper peppers in one minute. So that tells you about my, yeah. <laughs> what? Hey. I hold, yeah, I hold the world record for eating the most Carolina Reapers in one minute. You can go to Guinness and look me up. It's right there. <laughs> what? What? I used to have fun at a bar or something, and people would bet they could eat hot peppers and the first one that took a drink loses right and i could just sit there like now that's not even the same pepper yeah it, it, yeah. yeah anyway right just, on yeah man. so i'm excited for you to try some of my spicy stuff i uh, like a good awesome man awesome well kurt thanks again so much everybody don't forget to like subscribe share the video um kurt wallace uh one of I'll be honest, one of my favorite artists out there with that Phoenix is really just an amazing piece. I can't wait to see that liquid one, the results, because I've been thinking about doing that myself, but uh, I'm going to leave you uh, up to, to do that for us. And uh, anything you want to say to the masses before we shut her down? Uh, it's a crazy world out there, man. Just show a little more love. It, it's not that hard, really. Just and again, I think we're one of the most loving communities that there are out there. So just just be a light out there because it's it's a darkening world, man. That it is. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. If you've made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, we'll get more for you guys out there soon enough. The tie-dye mindset. Take care, guys. Peace.